Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is taken from Psalm 46, verses 1 through 3. This is the psalm that Luther based the hymn we just sang on. The psalmist writes, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, many of us here today grew up hearing the news commentator Paul Harvey, his famous phrase, now you know the rest of the story, rang out all over our radios. Not only was Paul Harvey's voice unique, you could probably pick him out whenever you heard him on the radio, but his storytelling was unique as well. He would start out by telling something that we all knew about somebody. Then he would backtrack and tell the story behind the story. Oftentimes, it was not what you would expect to hear. On this day that we celebrate the Reformation, that's kind of how it was for Martin Luther. We think of Martin Luther as a man who had a strong relationship with God, and he did. But it wasn't always that way. There was a time when God was anything but a mighty fortress and where, where Luther could reside comfortably and, in, and with confidence. In fact, for many years in Luther's mind, God was less like a mighty fortress and more like a mighty wall, impenetrable, imposing, unable to be scaled. According to Luther, God was a fortress, all, all right, but he was one that was constructed to keep people out rather than let people in. There are all kinds of quotes that we could cite from Luther during those days. He talked about how he was angry at God because in his view, God was not a heavenly father to be loved, but a relentless taskmaster to be appeased through a life of involuntary good works and endless demonstrations of holy living. If heaven was to be attained, he, that is Luther, would have to be the one to do it. Consequently, his life was defined by joylessness and fear. <clears throat> the harder Luther tried, the more he became aware of his failure to please God. <clears throat> Spiritually, Luther felt like he was on a treadmill, always exerting a lot of energy, but never getting anywhere. Now, if you think that I might be overstating the case, listen to the words that Luther wrote from another hymn. Dear Christians, one and all rejoice. We sing that hymn here in our church. Luther writes, My own good works availed me not, nor no merit they attaining. My will against God's judgment fought, no hope for me remaining. My fears increased till sheer despair left naught but death to be my share. And hell to be my sentence. Brothers and sisters in Christ, these are not the words of a happy person. Like many people, Martin Luther was simply verbalizing the anguish and the despair of those who are caught up in a performance-based religion. Over and over again, he wondered, have I done enough? Have I done enough good works for God to accept me? Maybe you know someone like that. Someone who thinks 
that they must do something to earn God's favor for those trapped in the performance-based idea of salvation. God is not a mighty fortress that provides refuge and strength. Rather, he is a wall that is impossible to be scaled. Try as you might, you could never get right with him. Thankfully for Luther, something changed. And with that change came a radical transformation of Luther's idea of God. You see, God ceased to be this impenetrable wall, but became a personal refuge and strength and an ever-present help in trouble. What happened, you ask? Well, that's the rest of the story. What happened was Luther discovered the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the gospel is the key to a right understanding of God and sin and eternal salvation. While working in the book of Romans, Luther came to understand that we are forgiven and made right with God, not by what we do for him. Rather, we are forgiven and made right with God because of what he has done and continues to do for us through Jesus Christ. The truth was revealed to Luther as he pondered words like the ones from Romans chapter 3. But now, a righteousness from God apart from law has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. In other words, salvation is by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ. When Luther realized this, it was like an incredible weight had been lifted from his shoulders. Trust in Jesus and you will be saved. That's the message of Scripture. You see, Jesus kept the law perfectly for us. Sin deserved punishment, so Jesus died on the cross as the substitute and payment for all of our sins. And three days later after his death, to prove that he did what he came to do, He rose victorious from the grave. And if you think that was good news, just wait. There's even greater news. You see, everything Jesus did is credited to the account of those who embrace him through faith. Brothers and sisters in Christ, there is no greater news than that. You and I and all believers, God credits to our account all the good that Jesus did. And all the bad that we do, Jesus takes upon himself. It is because of this that the psalmist could write, Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. It was just the opposite of what Luther originally thought. You see, God was not an imposing, unscalable wall that needed to be feared. Rather, in Jesus Christ, God was a mighty 
fortress, a place where we could run when the devil, the world, and even our own sinful flesh assault us. With God, we are safe and secure because he promises to protect us and he gives us the, co the confidence and the determination to face the troubles of this world. And not only that, but God also gives us the certainty of an eternal future with him. That is what Luther learned as he experienced his own reformation while studying God's word. That is, what Luther, that is what gave Luther the confidence to boldly proclaim God's word to princes, to councils, to popes, and to generations to come. And that is what the Reformation is all about. It's not just about celebrating the life of Martin Luther, admirable that may be, it's not about reveling in our own Lutheran heritage as grateful as we are for it. Rather, the Reformation is all about Jesus Christ and rejoicing in that gospel message and sharing that message with other people. You see, it's the gospel of Jesus Christ that shows us the true nature of God, not as an unapproachable and unable to be scaled wall. Rather, the gospel reveals God as our mighty fortress with whom we find peace and safety and protection in this life and the next. Indeed, God is our refuge and strength an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, not now, not ever. And now, brothers and sisters, you know the rest of the story. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Oh,